yes. It's on day four of the Miami Boat Show 2018. Zach's on lunch break, so I'm, I'm jumping in. And we've got a long-term, long-time friend, second time, well, two-time appearance. Third, that might be my third. Well, this is the third now. This is the third now, yes. Yeah. So, well. Lee? That's a formality that we can just indeed, get over Indeed, indeed, yes, 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 yes. I've always, <laughs> so we know what you do, we know you're retiring. We know prop speed. You're retiring from YPY then. I am retiring from YPY. Well, not retiring, I've, I'm, I've passed the torch. Passed the torch. Yes, on. I am now past president of uh, Young Professionals in Yachting. Uh, we had that uh, event, we had our bank, annual banquet, uh, where you guys actually got an award for, uh, for your uh, support of, of Young Professor Yachting, very awesome. Uh, I know it's your first of many awards, now, I think. There was, no, there was no tie for the awards and a third interview. There was, there was no, 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 no. There was no bribery, there was no bribery. No, it's, 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 all, it's all up and up, you know, there's no, there's no, no money changing hands here. <laughs> there could be. It's our first award. So it, it is your first, I think first of many, you know, I mean, I think, I think there's, a, it's a stretch maybe for the, the Pulitzer or, you know, an Emmy or a Grammy, but you know, you never know. If you don't, if you never have a dream, how's right. the dream Right, if you don't true? set your goals high, what are you going to get? <laughs> Nothing. Blimey. So now you pass the torch on. Pass the torch on. I know is a huge undertaking, as, as any voluntary organization it is. It is, yeah. Um, and you work like a trooper. You're traveling all around the world or just America? Well, no, mostly well, all around the world once in a while when, when I'm going to help support uh, the company in different countries for whatever events might be going on. But it's mostly around the country. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on planes a lot. But Are you on the Million Dollar Mile Club? No, thank God. I don't travel that much. Uh, I, I have... Some people are proud. I guess if you've done it, you are well, proud. Well, when, once you travel enough and you get upgraded all the time and you're, you're at that status level, it's something that people really value a ton and they, they want to make sure they always get it. Yeah. It's kind of I'm a, getting on a flight just before Christmas just to pop up the mileage type. Yes. Sorry. I actually did that this year. You, you did? I did. What, what? Christmas Eve or something? No, it was, uh, I don't know, a week before Christmas or something. I, I flew up to Baltimore and back. Because I needed, I needed one more flight to get status. To get what status? Uh, gold on Delta, which is so all that you know. What it does is gives you, it automatically upgrades you earlier and faster. So your 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 percentage of getting upgraded and having a better experience just increased exponentially. So you had to fly up to Baltimore, Baltimore and, back and back in the, in the same, same day. day. So yeah, I had lunch in Baltimore. Uh, came back through Atlanta, got my shoes shined in Atlanta, and then uh, came home. So I left at 7 a.m. and I got back at 7 p.m. A gold member. <laughs> well gold done, member. Sir. Well done, well done. <laughs> Not to be confused with the movie. <laughs> now, have you been in the marine industry all your life, or is... What, what... I, you know, I grew, I grew up in the marine industry, but uh, I really started in it in 2007. I started working for West Marine, and uh, just kind of for fun. And then it grew into a career, because I met uh, the market team manager that was handling the wholesale division in, in Maryland and I was working for the mortgage a mortgage industry a mortgage company and uh, that's right when you know they were all tanking Bloody hell. and so I left and started working with West and the company the mortgage company I was working for went bankrupt and was gone a month later so it was really good timing Bloody hell. yeah Wow. What was it like at West Marine then? Because it's a it fact, was a blast. I, I tell you what, I've always I, I kind of assume not assume but drilled it down into like three or four ways to get into the industry. Military service yep. in the Navy, and you move across. You do crew, and you work on a boat. Yep. Um, can't remember what the other one was, but the, other, the last one was you work for a media company, and then that's where you then move on right. because you know the network. Well, I got to actually, West Marine is a very Probably a, a responsible for a lot of jobs here in America. A ton. There, there is. We should start a group because I mean, you just hear at this show. There's probably maybe 50 people that worked at West Marine at some point, and now they're at whatever other company, and they're still in the industry. And that's where a lot of us got our start. You know, you, you. It, it was either working for a store because you, you, you loved boating, and that's where you wanted to go and get a good experience. Or you wanted the discount. Or you wanted the discount. I mean, that's certainly right. Absolutely, are you kidding? <laughs> Wait, retail? I'm no, no, I'm about 50% off, yes. I'll, 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 I'll buy I'll a work. boat, how am I going to do it? I'll work for West. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and so that was the, that's how I started. It was, and I, I had a, a blast working there. It was just a lot of fun. You were there for how many years? Uh, assuming nine years. Nine? Jeez. Yeah, so I started in, in Annapolis, and I was the, I handled the whole state, basically, for sales. 
like calling on boat yards and whatnot. And then I came down here to Fort Lauderdale in 2013 and uh, was here another two years. And then I started working with Prop Speed June of 15, 16. Good Lord, nine years at Westbrook. Yeah. And I've, you know, some of my best friends, you know, that's how I met some just amazing people. Yeah. You know, a lot of them are still there as well. I mean, it's uh, it's a great company. So, let's just get back before West Marine. Though. Yep. Into the mortgage days. Yeah, yeah. Because I've, a lot of people come from, well, a lot of people that I know come from what I would consider a very boring off 95 office job. Right. And come to, you know, this is work right now. Right. The, the, yeah. Genuinely, this is, it is what we're doing we're, right now. Having a drink. But it is. Talking to people. Yeah. The, the, the marine industry is, uh, is uh, we interviewed uh, Ken Hickling at Mets. Oh, yeah. And I he Ken. said, yeah. out of because he was in the paint industry, right? Grip, and so he got to go to all these other trade shows, the car shows, and this and that. The yachting industry, he said, is has the nicest people, yeah. and it's the nicest way of life because you are outside. <laughs> well, and, and and most of them, like Ken and others, you know, we we either there's the boating has been part of our life since we were you know five or whatever so it's when you have that history with something you're you're so passionate about it so it's you're excited to be doing it right so i think that's why it's such a great group of, of professionals is because we're all we're all in the industry but we love the industry because of we we love to be on the water so you're if we can right? what's that you're from the midwest oh, i'm from annapolis maryland the, fa- the uh, um, dc area Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Now, our, our family has is actually a, of my, uh, a farming American. background in the Midwest, though. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of a hybrid, you know. I'm either boating or I'm on a farm. Oh, okay. Kind of a strange. You used to putting your hands inside animals? No, luckily we didn't have to do that. Okay. Yeah, we were more of a drive a tractor and, you know, plow a field and, you know, run the combine and harvest. Uh, so your family's harvest. used to working with their hands? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That- yeah, the, the farmers would benefit. Well, I, I would go I, every summer. I'd go out there for like a month and help do whatever. God, see, in, in I don't know, in England, that just doesn't seem like it's possible anymore. Well, it's tough. So the the farm's been in the family for 110 years now, I think, and we have like 15. We had like 1,500 acres, and now I think it's more like 2,000. And in that range, you can make a living. But there's big, big investors that buy all this land, and then they have these big companies farm it all. So it's become more of a business, and the family-owned small farm is disappearing. And so ours, what were you, what were you uh, corn and soybeans. Oh, jeez. Yeah, all right. So you're part of the Bush, the Bush era. Oh, absolutely. Subsidy oh, yeah. No, well, my uncle actually was state senator of Illinois for 25 years, and no, knew him very well. Oh, we, we produce more corn uh, in, than anywhere on the planet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. I, I spent, so five years in a row, I spent a month, month and a half helping with the harvest, and all I was doing was operating the combine. One of the, I mean, talk about the, the yachts and the boats that our friends operate here and how amazing they are. The John Deere combine is the most amazing piece of equipment anywhere. Everything that it does and how easy it is to operate is absolutely incredible. It's because of the house. Huge thing. Oh yeah. I mean, I've got a video. I'll have to send you a video. I've got video. I'm driving the like the chase truck. So he, the combine. You never want the combine to stop. So you're going through the field, and you know you have a tractor with a with a wagon behind it, and so he can empty into it as you're going at speed. You're only going six miles an hour, but so I would pull up, and I have a video of me pulling up next to him at night. Because when the, when the temperature's right, you just run nonstop. Okay, you've got to cut corn at a certain... Uh, so mo- moisture level is what you're after. So, oh, so it if, as long as it's dry, yeah. So when when the combine does what it does, it, and you end up with just the kernels in the, in the back, right? And it's all about moisture level. Because if it's too the moisture level is too high, you've got to dry it. Because you can't store it or it'll, it'll, it'll ruin it. So it's because it's got to be able to tra- it's got to be able to get transported to wherever it's going. Do you miss any of this, or are you just glad <laughs> that you can see it every now and again when you go home? Well, I so my you know my cousin and my and his son do it every day. I could never do it every day. I love helping 
because you the know whole thing. Back. <laughs> yeah, I can I can go in for a month and then I'm done. You know, uh, but I'll be I'll be honest. I've never enjoyed working that hard in my life because you're working 18 hour days if the temperature's right. I don't know. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> That's fascinating.